Hi everyone! Today we'll be talking about high yield endocrinology presentations. Let's get started. So the first patient has a midline cyst that moves with swallowing. This is a thyroglossal duct cyst. The next patient has low serum osmolality, low urine osmolality, and it corrects with water deprivation. So this is primary polydipsia. The next patient has high serum osmolality, low urine osmolality, and it corrects with vasopressin. So this is central diabetes insipidus. The next patient has a high serum osmolality, low urine osmolality, and no correction with vasopressin. This is going to be nephrogenic diabetes insipidus. The next patient has small cell lung cancer, develops hyponatremia, and a high urine osmolality. This is SIADH. And remember, small cell lung cancer can present with this ectopic ADH secretion as a perineoplastic syndrome. The next patient is postpartum and develops an inability to breastfeed, feeling cold, and has hair loss. This is Sheehan syndrome. It occurs due to a pituitary infarction after bleeding during childbirth. The next patient has an enlarged jaw and nose, coarse facial features, high blood sugar, and concentric left ventricular hypertrophy. This is acromegaly, and this happens due to too much growth hormone secretion, and remember, we measure the IGF-1 levels for workup. The next patient has weight loss, thinning hair, tachycardia, and hyperreflexia. This is hyperthyroidism. The next patient has weight gain, constipation, bradycardia, and hyporeflexia. This is hypothyroidism. The next patient has non-tender thyroid and fibrous tissue in the thyroid. This is riddle thyroiditis, and the key here is the fibrosis. The next patient has an enlarged thyroid, high TSH levels, anti-TPO antibodies. This is Hashimoto thyroiditis which is an autoimmune cause of hypothyroidism. The next patient has a recent childbirth, tremor, tachycardia, and anti-TPO antibodies. This is postpartum thyroiditis. For postpartum thyroiditis, We'll mention somebody that recently had a baby and they can develop hypo or hyperthyroid symptoms and it usually goes away after a little while. The next patient has a painful thyroid, a low T4, high TSH, and a low radioiodine uptake. So this is subacute granulomatous thyroiditis and the key here is the painful tender thyroid. The next patient is an infant that has a large tongue and an umbilical hernia. This is congenital hypothyroidism, also called cretinism. The next patient is going to be hospitalized and very ill and now develops an increased reverse T3 level. And this is euthyroid 6 syndrome. And remember, you get the thyroid changes because of an underlying condition. So if you treat the underlying illness, these lab values will also get better. The next patient has ophthalmopathy, pretibial myxedema, a low TSH, and uniformly increased radioiodine uptake. So this is Graves' disease, which is an autoimmune cause of hyperthyroidism. The next patient has high T3 and T4 levels, a low TSH, with a single area of iodine uptake. 
So this is a toxic adenoma. The next patient has low calcium, low phosphorus, and a high PTH. This is vitamin D deficiency. The next patient has low calcium, high phosphorus, and a low PTH. This is primary hypoparathyroidism. The next patient has a high calcium, low phosphorus, and a high PTH. So this is primary hyperparathyroidism. Next, we have low calcium, high phosphorus, high PTH with an elevated creatinine level. So this is CKD. The next patient is status post-thyroidectomy, and when you tap the facial nerve, it leads to a contraction. So this is hypocalcemia. The next patient is status post-thyroidectomy and has increasing thyroglobulin. This is recurrence of thyroid malignancy. The next patient can have a RET, PTC, or BRAF mutation, or also a history of radiation therapy, Somoma bodies, empty nuclei, and nuclear grooves are seen on histology, and it's going to invade the cervical lymph node. So this is papillary carcinoma. The next one is going to have a PAX-8 PPAR gamma translocation, and it's going to invade the thyroid capsule. This is follicular carcinoma. The next type of thyroid cancer arises from the parafollicular C cells, produces calcitonin, we can see amyloid, and it stains with the Congo red staining, and it's a part of the MEN2A and MEN2B syndromes. So this is medullary carcinoma. The next one has hypercalcemia, galacteria, and multiple ulcers. This is MEN1 syndrome, and remember here the three Ps, pituitary, parathyroid, and pancreatic tumors that we can get here. So the hypercalcemia can be arising from a parathyroid issue. Galacteria is signifying a uh, prolactinoma coming from the pituitary, and then multiple ulcers can be a gastrinoma. The next one, we have hypercalcemia, high blood pressure, episodic sweating, and high calcitonin levels. So this is going to be MEN2A syndrome, where we have the parathyroid, pheochromocytoma, and a medullary thyroid carcinoma as well. And remember, the episodic hypertension and sweating is going to be a part of a pheochromocytoma presentation. Again, we have hypercalcemia, which is a part of a parathyroid issue, and then the high calcitonin is going to be because of the medullary thyroid carcinoma. The next one is a patient that has tall, is very tall, has long arms and legs, nodules on the tongue, and episodes of high blood pressure. So this is MEN2B syndrome, where we have a pheochromocytoma and medullary thyroid carcinoma similar to MEN2A, but here we also have a Marfan habitus and the mucosal neuromas, which are signified by the nodules on the tongue. Next, we have a child that comes in with polydipsia and polyuria. So this is going to be type 1 diabetes, and remember this is the autoimmune form of diabetes. Usually it tends to happen in younger patients, and they're going to get, you know, very thirsty. They're going to be urinating more often, so that's an important condition. And we want to compare this um, to a patient that's going to have type 2 diabetes, which tends to be a little bit older, more overweight. Um, and for histology... For type 1 diabetes, it's autoimmune, so we see a lot of lymphocytes, versus in type 2 diabetes, we actually see amyloid buildup, so think about the Congo red staining again.
Next, we have a patient with type 1 diabetes, high glucose levels, abdominal pain, and ketones in the urine. So this is diabetic ketoacidosis, which is a complication of type 1 diabetes. The next, we have a type 2 diabetic patient with burning in the feet and then loss of sensation. So this is diabetic neuropathy, so look out for the burning, numbness, tingling, especially in the lower extremities. Next, we're going to have a type 2 diabetic patient with cloudy vision. So this is cataracts. And remember, this is due to a sorbitol buildup. Next, we have a type 2 diabetic patient that has a recent infection and now has high glucose levels, but no ketones. Okay, so this one is going to be hyperosmolar hyperglycemic state. HHS, which is kind of like the DKA of type 2 diabetes. Next, we have a type 2 diabetic patient who is vomiting partially digested food. This is gastroparesis. Next, we have a type 2 diabetic patient with dribbling of urine and a high post void volume. So this is neurogenic bladder. Next, we have a patient with type 2 diabetes that now has high creatinine and proteinuria. So this is diabetic nephropathy. Next, we have a patient who has weight gain, easy bruising, abdominal striae, and muscle weakness. So this is Cushing syndrome. And remember here, the patients are going to have a high cortisol level. Next, we have a patient with high blood pressure, low potassium, and low renin. So this is hyperaldosteronism. Next, we have a patient with high blood pressure, low potassium, but high renin. So this is a renin-producing tumor. So when there's low renin with a high aldosterone, we call this a primary hyperaldosteronism. When we have a high renin and high aldosterone level, we say this is a secondary hyperaldosteronism. Next, we have a patient with high cortisol and low ACTH. So this is primary hyperadrenalism, also called Cushing's. Next, we have a patient with high cortisol, high ACTH, and it decreases when we have a high dose dexamethasone suppression test. So this is a pituitary adenoma, also called secondary hyperadrenalism or Cushing's disease. Next, we have high cortisol, high ACTH with no change in ACTH with the dexamethasone suppression test. So this is a small cell lung carcinoma or an ectopic ACTH production. Next, we have somebody with pigmented skin, weakness, fatigue, low blood pressure, low glucose, but a high potassium. This is primary adrenal insufficiency, also called Addison's disease. Next, we have a patient with a fever, headache, stiff neck, low blood pressure, and high potassium level. So this is waterhouse Fredrickson syndrome, and we get this usually due to a meningitis infection. Next, we have an episodic headache, sweating, and very high blood pressure. So this is a pheochromocytoma. Things about a pheochromocytoma is that it comes from the adrenal medulla, specifically the chromaffin cells um, are going to be secreting catecholamines, which cause you know the episodic headache, palpitations, hypertension, and sweating. Um, and remember, to treat, you give an alpha blocker and then a beta blocker. Next, we have a patient that has low glucose, high insulin, and high C-peptide levels. This is an insulinoma. 
The next patient has low glucose, high insulin, but a low C-peptide level. This is exogenous insulin use. The next patient has high glucose levels with a rash called necrolytic migratory erythema. This is a glucagonoma. Again, look out for subtle details in the vignette, including recently diagnosed diabetes and a skin rash. Next, we have a patient with watery diarrhea, low acid, low potassium, and a mass in the pancreas. This is called a vipoma. Next, we have a patient that comes in with flushing, wheezing, diarrhea, increased serotonin levels, and a whole systolic murmur in the left fifth intercostal space parasternally. This is carcinoid syndrome. And remember, the heart murmur is due to the tumor affecting the right-sided heart valves, which can present with these murmurs. Next, we have a patient with epigastric burning, diarrhea, and multiple ulcers. This is called a gastronoma or Zollinger-Ellison syndrome. Thank you so much for listening. If you have any questions at all, please feel free to reach out and don't forget to subscribe and leave any comments or questions below. Thank you so much. Good luck studying everyone.